the Alaska Cast. I'm Austin Manolik. And I'm Landon Albertson. Just a couple average bros trying to be above average, trying to fill that freezer and make a little less wall space. But in the end, it's all about the adventure. Spring cleaning. It's time. It's breakup time, bud. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. It is. It's well, beautiful. We're on the edge of it, at least. Yeah, it's just kind of starting. Like my, my driveway. You can actually see the driveway and uh, the wind berm is kind of getting mushy. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So at the bottom, this dirt road is going to be a little pig pen for a little while, but that'll be fine. I guess, what what is breakup? So breakup in Alaska, and like we talk tough about Alaska, and... I say talk tough because I've been to a lot of different states uh, during deer seasons, late seasons, and the humid cold is different from the dry cold. You know, in Alaska, uh-huh. we just have dark. It's just darkness cold. It it's, stays it's darker. It's the dark cold. It's the darker. It's It just stays darker for the longer here. Uh, but breakup happens in the spring. We don't really have a... We don't really have, like, too much of a spring. All of a sudden, it goes from winter to summer, like, a light, Mm -hmm. you know? That being said, this year, we've actually had a real winter, a lot of snow, uh, the the standard darkness. Not as windy, but just, we had a winter. Mm -hmm. This winter was cold. Like, January was cold. Yeah. Because it was, like, in the low negatives. For weeks, weeks, negative twenty, we, negative we, thirty. We actually nope. had a, we had a real winter, is what most Alaskans and stuff have well, said. So you're Alaskan, but as Ben says, you're not a true Alaskan I'm, until you I'm spent true more time in Alaska than you have in any other state. Mm-hmm. And there's real Alaskans. You know who they are. They stay. They stay here year round. They know about the winters. Mm-hmm. Then there's, um, you know, the winter birds who leave for six months, and then there's fake Alaskans, which kind of get under my skin um, because <laughs> they say they're Alaskan. They get Alaska benefits, mm-hmm. you know, residency, being able to hunt and fish, and they don't live here year round. And I don't agree with that. Yeah, but I know a guy, and I know many people who uh, write proposals. And I believe things are going to change. Oh, really? They're mm-hmm. going to address such issues. Such so. issues are going to be because if you live in a state, you should be living in that state longer than you live anywhere else to obtain the benefits. Even if you aren't receiving resident benefits anywhere else, but you're hiding from the dark and cold, which you got to figure it out, sure. You got your money. Some people have more than enough money to do that. Some people um, don't and wish they did. Um, And, uh, you know, we're in a position now where, yeah, we could probably leave, but our lifestyle would be much different. Mm -hmm. But I don't want that. Yeah. I don't like that. There's too many good things up here. Especially during the winter. Mm -hmm. And I'd be going away from all the kid care and uh, (laughs) (laughs) in-laws. Which, yeah, like, which could be a benefit or uh, <laughs> a negative. I don't know, however you want to look at it. He'd probably a little bit tougher on me, for sure. <laughs> um, but uh, spring breakup happens from around March to uh, beginning of May. And then May is basically spring. And spring is just a melted, all the trails, all the the roads, everything's just kind of like mushy. Mm -hmm. It's bad. But you could experience the spring from your bear stand. And I know like if you're you're a weekend warrior like me, you'll go Mm -hmm. in and it looks similar to what it does right now. It's snow, no no, uh, leaves or anything on the trees, just barren. And then you go the next week and you're like, it's green. What happened? Yeah, it's like green up. So that's a spring bear, man. That's mm-hmm. the first thing you look for. South facing slopes and green. The bears go. They're looking for that green. They're looking to blow out that fecal plug. Mm-hmm. And they're looking for their first food. And if you got a badass brown bear or badass grizzly, they're looking for sow's denning with easy cubs to eat. Black bears, real easy prey of any size if you're a grizz. And um, some brown bears 
hibernate. Some brown bears quasi hibernate. They're in and out because they're near a food source if they're really big and smart. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's just spring is really interesting. All of a sudden, it's there. And to get to the spring bear, this isn't a spring bear podcast, but we're kind of tickling at it. Mm-hmm. To get to really good spring bear spots, there's like this sweet spot. To get to the spot, depending on your transportation, because you're going to have on some of the trails, the rivers, et cetera, like it's breaking up and to get there is pretty tough. And then you get there and it's just a mud pit. And then the further deeper you go, depending on how you're going to access it, snow machine, you know, jet boat, four wheeler, ATV, et cetera. Um, depending on how you're going to access it, it can be tough to get there when they're popping out. And then, once it dries up enough and you get there when they're popping out, usually they're already out and they're moving and there's a lot of green up. So it's harder to spot them. So there's like this, as with anything, there's, there's timing is everything. So some people don't start hunting them, um, until March or excuse me, May. Some people start hunting, hunting them in March on snow machines mm-hmm. at the end of March. Like a couple of these days, these bluebird days like we're having right now, it's breaking up in the mountains. They're getting dripped on in their den. They're getting pissed off and they're coming out. So people on a snow machine can get up high, get right next to them and shoot them. Mm-hmm. That's, um, I don't know when, but uh, BBB Alaskan, uh, at least Bowen, Bon, Brett Bon, mm. maybe it's Brian. I just know him by his Instagram handle, but he's the one, if you've seen uh, kind of that viral post about his dad getting his face ripped off, Mm -hmm. uh, because they were spring bear hunting him, and they were up and above the den, below the den. I don't know exactly how the story went, but those bears come out of those dens, and they are upset. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that is a graphic portray of bear hunting. Oh, my Lord. (laughs) What a tough old bastard. Mm -hmm. I, I'm saying bastard. I've never met the guy, but I mean, how tough is he? Just get his face tough ripped guy. off and sitting there in an eye, it looks like. And, you know, talking about the bear moving so yeah. fast, it happens yeah. so fast. You're like, where is his mouth, his nose? Where does it even yeah, begin and end? Hanging. And he's like telling a story. <laughs> <laughs> his son's video, and it, it's just like, please get this guy medical attention. So those are, those dudes, Alaskan, mm-hmm. right? A tough old dude just taking yeah. it. And we are, no. well, at least me, I'm nowhere near, near that level. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. I've tried hunting them on snow machine and I've been back. I've never drug one out on a snow machine, but I've been back and I've spent some time. Mm-hmm. And usually my deal with spring bear is uh, persistence. You know, I'll start and go out. I'm a bear too, man. I'm getting out of hibernation. I'm going to go out and go and, you know, frolic in the mountains however I can. Mm-hmm. Boat, hike. And then usually I've got the backup plan, the bear bait, you know, when that finally comes in, when the bears start coming. Okay, yeah, I've got the fall back. Mm -hmm. But um, I've got some spring hiking spots that have gone. And then I went to a spot this last uh, couple years ago. And I went to a spot that I've gone for a long time since college. And uh, I went in there. And everything had changed. It was the same, but everything had changed. It's The spot got blown up. Mm. So you saw a lot of people, and I was camping in a spot, and it was kind of a funny story. Um, <laughs> if the guy's listening, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you deserve getting your steaks eaten, dude. Uh, it's kind of funny. In this spot, I'm trying to take my wife out with persistence. Mm-hmm. We're going out weekend after weekend, trying to go be weekend warriors. I'm like, all right, well, we've got just enough time to get there. We'll drive all through the night. We'll get there. We'll drive on the wheeler all through the day. We'll get there, get an evening hunt in, sleep, get a morning hunt in, and then we got to get back, and then I'll drive through the night and get you to work. Mm-hmm. We get back in there and uh, get to my spot, set up. And we're sitting there. I'm like, yeah, I think we're the first ones here. This is sweet. And I'm like, oh, yep, there's a bear. It's a sow with a cinnamon cub. You know, we're sitting there with our two dogs. Actually, we were watching uh, Vince and Sammy's dogs, too. Just just sitting there from, at camp? At camp. Mm-hmm. Looking up on a south-facing slope. And uh, I'm like, yep, there they are. Sweet. 
I'm like, all right, it's just a matter of time. And then we only saw sows with cubs up there, which meant the bra- uh, the the boars had moved lower or they were still up higher, depending, because the sows and the boars usually aren't on the same level. Because mm-hmm. the boars are going to push the sows higher or they're going to push them lower, depending on what they're up to. If they got too much testosterone, if they're hungry, they're going to do whatever they want. But the sows are going to steer clear because their cubs are a snack, mm-hmm. regardless of species of bear. So my wife and I are sitting there. And, uh, it's getting, it's getting dark, right? We've already set up our camp. We've got a fire going. All of a sudden we see a couple more four wheelers going like, Oh, okay, cool. They're, they're coming up. And, um, I had already done a reconnoiter. I reconnoitered the rim, old gold, gold rush term there. I was reconnoitering the rim. So I checked I like around that. where we were at. I checked, I'm like, okay, there's no camps. Cool. Um, I had went, you know, a mile in each direction. We actually came from one way. I'm like, all right, cool. Nobody's here. So we go back, set up camp. We're sitting there for a few hours. We're watching bears. And um, here comes some four-wheelers. And they come by. They give us the wave. I'm like, okay, cool, man. We camped here. We're in a good spot. They're going to they're gonna have to move on. They're definitely spring bear, but bear hunting. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're sitting there. And about an hour later... You know, I've got some brews going. I've got some brewskis. I'm hanging out. I'm like, there's no way we can get to the bears tonight and actually put on a stock and kill one. It's, you know, it's dark, essentially. And dark, it's not really dark. Like, it's spring, so you can see longer. But we were just kind of like, ah, we'll bookmark any bears if we see them. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, as it's quieting down, I'm like, okay, this is prime time. We're going to locate one. We'll go up tomorrow and get them. We're drinking beers at a fire, just enjoying it, loving life. We don't even know if we're going to shoot a bear. You know, we don't care. We're just enjoying each other's company. And all of a sudden, oh, absolutely teeth jarring boom. Uh Like it is right next to us. I'm like, oh, you know, shit, get down. (laughs) Jordan and I hunker. Like, oh, man, beers get knocked over. So like, oh, my God, what the hell just happened? Like, I'm sitting there. I'm like, are you all right? She's like, yeah, I'm fine. You all right? I'm like, yeah, where are the dogs? And here comes Crixus running around the corner, and he's like, you know, tail tucked between his legs. And I'm like, I was like, oh, man, we must have parked right next to somebody's bear bait. Those guys probably came in, and they probably got a bear bait right there. I'm like, oh, man, that sucks. I had no clue, right? Didn't mm-hmm. see any signs, didn't see anything, and we're basically glamping. You know, we're camping. We got all of our stuff out, big camp, big tent, big everything set up. We're just glass and hanging out, enjoying life uh, on our, like— spring out of a hibernation trip and so Crixus comes up running at me I'm like oh what's going on buddy you know all the other dogs are in camp and I hear a four-wheeler start up and I'm like yep they shot a bear and we're right next to their bear bait I'm like that sucks but I wonder why they bear bait so close to the trail that's weird and uh all you know all of a sudden here comes a four-wheeler I'm like oh man they're like a hundred yards away from us Mm-hmm. I'm like, man, I didn't know we were going to be that close to their bear bait. I'm thinking like, yeah, we screwed up. And the guy comes into our camp, blazing glory with a shotgun brandished, um, you know, on his, and he's got a gun in one hand and he reaches down and he grabs something. I'm like, oh, no, what the hell is going to happen, right? Like mm-hmm. th- this dude's upset and he is beating his handlebars with something and he's screaming at me, you're dog he came into our fucking camp and he came in and ate our steaks and, and i was like <laughs> i'm like oh i'm oh my i'm oh my god i'm sorry man I, I i didn't know you guys had a bear bait so close you guys got a bear bait no we don't have no fucking bear bait we're out here hunting bears screaming and i'm beating his handlebars like real aggressively and i'm sitting here like, you know i'm like is this going to be a shootout? What is it? This dude's coming in. He's got a shotgun in one hand, beating his handlebars with a stake. He said, all my years I've been coming here. I've never effing seen that. Blah, 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 blah. I'm like, oh, well, so you guys don't have a bear bait over there. No, we don't have a bear bait. And you guys just came in and set up camp. Yeah. It's like, so you guys saw us camping here and you set up camp a hundred yards from us. <laughs> And you're hunting these bears right here. Yeah, what do you think we're doing? I'm like, so you didn't give us enough space. You, you can't. We, we've got literally 
20 miles in each direction, man, and you wanted to camp right here, you could have gone five miles down. That's not the effing point, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, man, this, this is – I'm like, you know what, man? Go ahead and go back to your camp. Like, you decided to camp right here. Thanks. Have a nice day. Mm-hmm. Have a nice day. So he completely came thanks in. Thanks for feeding my dog dinner. <laughs> he completely came in. And the first thing I'm like, man, well, thanks for not shooting my dog. I'm really sorry. I didn't know you guys had a bear bait here. I didn't know you guys mm-hmm. were camped here. And that guy came in, camped right on top of us 100 yards away, and had the same mentality. Oh, we're going to set up. We're going to do this. But we were on a point, And he camped right next to us when he had miles in either direction. And he could have gone up after the same bear that we were at, but he decided to camp right there when he saw a husband and wife or a couple with four dogs and a fire in a big camp. And he's going to camp a hundred yards away when we have all of God's creation in front of us. Ouch. Like, oh, okay. I'm like, all right. So we leashed up the dogs because where we're hunting, you you got to hike, hike a few miles to get up the mountain. And then you're you're really hunting, but you can glass from where you're at. And so we're not using dogs to hunt or anything. We're just out there hanging out. Might as well just be glamping, you know, just mm-hmm. which really all it was because we never even went on a stock. Mm-hmm. And this guy camps right next to us. So I'm like, well, that's your fault, dude. You just uh, fed a dog, uh, you know, ribeye steaks or whatever, <laughs> you jerk. Like, it's your fault. Uh, um, no boundaries. No boundaries, man. So just think about that. There's no – the ethics of this person's camp right here. There's miles. I watched him come for three miles. He could have camped anywhere mm-hmm. on this ridge. And he decides to camp 100 yards from me. And there's – you can see the mountain from every which direction. He camped 100 yards from me. And I was like, dude, I was here first in the point – Right here, you could camp anywhere else. You're gonna out hunt us anyway. It's you and another dude. Mm-hmm. You got a man, a wife, and four dogs. Come on, really? Like, so at any rate, that was. Uh, we ended up killing a bear. Not that trip. Uh, we went a couple more times, and she ended up killing her uh, a bear on our bear bait. Nice. But that was our start to our spring a couple years ago. That was uh, pre kiddo. That was pre pre keeper is that the one where she shoots a grizzly from the tree stand mm-hmm. her first grizz man that was that year okay which you could find on mission alaska youtube mm-hmm. right? if you want to check that hunt out yeah that was a good one man that was a so that was glamping right mm-hmm. like but we had a really easy trail to get there and um it's just a long it's a long haul to get in there but uh we took entirely too much stuff. We would have had enough room for a bear, but we had, you know, four dogs, which are only going to hurt our hunting. Mm-hmm. They're not like hunting dogs. Uh, Pickle and Cricks is not a track, but uh, Fred and Fern are just barking dogs. They yeah. might as well be bear bait, you know, <laughs> sweet little dogs. But uh, which, so is, which is, uh, Jin is a classic overpacker. Like anything we go, quick little river trick. So we just got back from Maui. We go to the beach. I have a backpack. The kids have a backpack. We all have our hands full of all this stuff. Snacks, to, treats. Snacks, ice chest, volleyball, football, extra clothes, towels, you know, all all things that make sense. But you could go back to the car if you're going to change. Or, But we are just got all this stuff just walking down, down the beach, you know. Blatant <laughs> tourists. Blatant. <laughs> like, we have too much stuff. Mm. Which can kind of it's a good pivot to what we what we got surrounding us here. Yeah, we got gear bombs. Uh, this is a time when we're clearing up garages. I just did a video on Instagram that showed like truly how redneck I am. Mm-hmm. You know, like I got the shed out back that I don't show anybody. There's skulls <laughs> on the outside. And it looks like it, oh, this is legit. Nice. And then you go in. And it's just a wood shed with stuff just stacked to the ceilings. Like you know my. Sea Arc seats over my boat. The boat seats are in there. Mm-hmm. Got a push lawn mower. The baby, you know, the baby uh, car seats are in there. Mm-hmm. Just like just stacked to the ceiling with uh, jerry cans of gas, salmon smoker, dip nets, tools. Just all the, all the play things that you might need later on in the season. Yeah, right. And then they just sit out there in that shed. And Alaska's the, – the winter here with like the wind and the – I don't know. It just gets dry rotted immediately. So anything that you have, even out in the shed, that's why I've got these four-wheelers inside. I keep them inside. You know, I start them up during the winter even though I don't really use them. Um, it's just because everything just gets hammered by the weather. Mm. So 
that's my uh, last year for my wife's and I's anniversary. I built a deck, which is a great archery platform. Mm-hmm. We just went live on uh, Instagram and like 10 people saw it. Tim. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it is a big deal. It's a huge deal. Uh, no, I can't remember how many saw it, but usually there's a couple thousand that check out Mission yeah, Alaska couple, story. A couple thousand, you know, just hammering us with questions. And, oh my gosh. And, you know, people just want to know what type of gear we got, what we're doing, what we're up to. <laughs> <laughs> we're making fun of ourselves, if uh, you can't tell. Uh, not big deals at all over here. Uh, uh, average bros. Average bros trying to be above average, man. Mm-hmm. I was. I was talking to you earlier about that. What do you got to do to actually be above average? Some people think like, oh man, this guy, you know, for me, he's an expert. Like I'm in the Winchester catalog as an expert. And I'm like, oh, I guess for some things, maybe, maybe not. I mean, as far as an expert and the 10,000 hours and how many times you've done something like, yeah, oh yeah, definitely. But I just know the, the caliber of hunters in Alaska. And I know a lot of individual people who are on social media, some silent giants, some different people. Where I'm like, yep, I'm still just kind of like a nobody. Um, yeah, I can go out there and I'm pretty mentally tough. So I can withstand, endure, and have enough time to go out there and be successful. But I just know how many people in Alaska are just badasses. So mm-hmm. I still feel like, and I feel forever, I will be, always have that mentality, like a chip on the shoulder of just being just average, just just competing, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, I think that is that is okay if you feel like that all the time because then you're always striving to be better. You don't get stuck in a rut of, I'm, I'm number one. Oh my gosh, not even close because I know some number ones out there, like the less than 1% and um, basically the less than 1%, the guys who are doing uh, the guided hunts and even some of those that are guides are not part of the 1%. Mm-hmm. Um, they're just competing. They're competing with the average shows. Uh, as far as Alaska goes, land control, guide concessions and individual controlled land like native corporation, native land, you can shut people out. And it takes a lot of money to do so. And yeah, you might be able you might be able to be a resident that sneaks in and goes and, and gets in there because there's nobody really policing it. But there is native corporation police. There is um, you know the state troopers. There's all sorts of people who are in there uh, at these different locations, depending. But guides can control certain areas, and I know there's certain people that have certain things sewed up. So that you can't go and be there. You can't even exist. You couldn't even get a flight in there if you tried. Unless you've got a super cub and you're a pilot and you can go in there and go do that. So I do know some pilots and even even knowing that there is pilots and there's, you know, hunts that I've been on where I'm like, Oh yeah, we're not gonna see anybody. We flew in here and Yep. Here comes somebody else with a super cub, another badass from the valley, zipping in and landing on a short strip that's not a strip at all. And here they are. It's like, well, Sorry, guys, we're here. We're going to hunt. There's nothing you can say. So that's what I mean. Average, you could you could have an average Super Cub pilot that gets out there and sees more people than the dude with, the, you know, the prized thighs that goes in and hikes somewhere. So mm-hmm. uh, it's all, all that's relative. All that's relative to the hunt, your style, your technique, and there's so many ways to access Alaska and so many different hunts that you can go on. It's not the back 30. It's like, all right, which, where are we going? Which game management unit? What, what's the goal? Did we draw a tag? Uh, and I could, I could go on and on, but mm-hmm. basically we're, we're sitting in a gear bomb right now. And we're talking about what do you have in your pack? What do you always keep in your pack? And, uh, which individual hunts are we, are we talking about to go on? Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like a, it's supposed to be a gear episode where, uh, I'm Austin Manelik. I'm Landon Albertson. And so we're we're teaming up to do the Alaska cast, Mission Alaska, Prairie Adventure. There might be some restructuring going on in the near future. Mm-hmm. But uh right now we're 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 sticking to our guns and uh we're we're getting content out amid the COVID crisis pandemic. Mm-hmm. Which is kind of what we're doing right now, we're still a podcast, but we're still following the rules. Mm-hmm. Six feet, six feet. Don't, but it's kind of shutting shutting the country down. And one thing that you got to think about is with the hunting and fishing regulations, if this continues, what's it going to be like for the next year? Well, I know that there's 
a lot of guides who are feeling the pressure mm-hmm. because people from Europe that drew tags and people from across the country can't come and hunt. Mm-hmm. So lower 48, I don't know what the travel ban is doing, but we're supposed to be quarantined for two weeks, not leaving. Which, and which got extended further now. Yep. So another two weeks. And uh, we were supposed to do this meeting via Zoom, but I'm like, eh, I'm not that interested. Let's be bad boys. Let's link up and shoot some arrows outside and hang out in the garage. Mm-hmm. You know, come inside. Don't breathe on me. No. I won't breathe on you. <laughs> <laughs> Wash your hands. Yeah. But it it just, you know, it's strange like with that travel ba- band and – um, with all the regulations that the governor and president are putting on there, how it's affecting those businesses that rely on, you know, tourists and mm-hmm. and hunting and, and fishing. I mean, the state of Alaska, there's towns that only survive because of tourist activity in the summer or spring and summer and fall for hunting. That's when you make all your money, spring, mm-hmm. summer, fall, yeah. if you're in some of those industries. And like, I've got some friends who are doing construction right now, and they're like, yeah, this is pretty tough because I'm contractually building a few houses right now, but a few others were on the pipeline, and their work is not guaranteed right now, so that just went away. Mm-hmm. So everybody's being really affected in the uh, in the economy right now. Like, how do we get rich off this? If you have a little bit of money... <laughs> I'm thinking, money, how do we do this? I know there's going to be people that are going to be made millionaires after this, buying when the stocks are low, then all of a sudden it rebounds, drops some heat, comes out with something, their stocks come all the way back up. And I know people are investing in sanitizers and all sorts of stuff. And quite honestly, the hunting industry is, um, in my opinion, chatting with some people is doing well because people are like, oh, is this the end of the world? Let's stock up on ammo. Let's stock up on firearms. I've always wanted to buy a firearm. Now is the time. Mm-hmm. So that's that's the same like when a Democrat gets in office. It's like, oh, no, they're going to take our guns. Second <laughs> yeah. Amendment's gone. You know, And depending on the, the politics. I'm, like, I'm not into politics whatsoever, really. Um, just what's going to affect my hunting opportunities here yeah. in Alaska. <laughs> they, they get really fired up. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, like right now Trump's in and it's like, well, how's the industry? It's like, well, it's great, but nobody's concerned that our guns are going to get taken away from us Mm -hmm. um, or our right to bear arms. Um, And I'm talking tough right now in politics. And actually, I really don't know. (laughs) But uh, I know that a lot of people, (laughs) I'll go back to COVID and a lot of people are like, yep, I better buy a bunch of 5.56. I better buy some ammo for my guns. And like me personally, I'm looking over here. I literally locked up all my ammunition. I put all of my ammunition that's like doesn't go to any of my guns um, or just like casings or just anything that I have that's peripheral to anything that I have uh, in my safes and I put that in a different spot. So, like, I locked up all the ammunition. I got it all together, organized my ammo. I'm like, yep, this is what I would take. And what I would take personally in my gear or bug out, I got a bunch of 300 WSM ammo now. So, I've got a, K, like, I don't know, a box of that. I've got that and my 300 WSM. That's what I would grab. Mm-hmm. Take that and then two canisters of 556. And my my five five six, I'd load the fi- the uh, the handguns in the backpack and take those. But once you run out of ammo, it's just you know dead weight essentially. So could use um, could use it as a tomahawk at that point. <laughs> <laughs> Heavy tomahawk, man. I'd just <laughs> use a tomahawk, <laughs> a wood chopper device. So at any rate, uh, Landon brought over his pack with what he would take. He's got it all laid out. We did a live Facebook. And basically, he's got everything to survive. Mm-hmm. So kind of what what I would grab if I were going on a, on a hunt, but which also would be a good opportunity to grab things for survival. Um, water purifier. Mm. You got your cooking equipment, knives, first aid kits, um, sleeping bag, which I run the... Exped, E X P E D, Exped or Exped. I don't know how they pronounce it, but I think it's short for expedition. Mm, okay. So I think it would be Exped. Um, negative 11. Uh, it's full down sleeping bag. Um, yeah, and I think, and then I got my little survival kit that has 
some fishing hooks, some weights, and stuff to start a fire, which I think is important to go in any pack. Um, but which also brings the point around you also have to have your pack with you if you're going to put survival stuff in it and not leave it in the truck, which I've done before and wish I had equipment while I was out there. But I was like, ah, this is going to be a quick little trip. I'm just going to, you know, see if there's any elk over this ridge. Quick little thing. End up getting lost, you know. That's how it happens. (laughs) So, basically, I have... My bare essentials that no matter what, I take certain things. They always ride in any of my packs. I got a kill kit, which has a fire starter, first aid, some game bags, my knives, some gloves, some cordage, pack replacement, so kit. Like there's certain things that I take in there, super glue. Um, and I always keep that in every pack, and it depends on the hunt that I'm going on. If I'm going on a long sheep hunt, I. You know, I'll use the, uh, like a Kestrel scalpel, mountain scalpel. I'll take that with me. It's just lightweight. So you can, you don't have to sharpen any blades. You don't have a sharpener, etc. That's um, like the disposable surgical blades. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. I like that. I started using those this year. And it's so, just nice to have such a sharp blade. Just pop one off, pop one out, and you're just back in the action. Some people get rid of those blades, but you can actually tune those blades back up. Larry McMurphy. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, you know, learning how to flesh bears, turn lips like properly from a taxidermist. He, he schooled me up on that. He's like, yeah, everyone gets rid of these things, but if you're running a business, you gotta, you gotta learn the, mm-hmm. how to save some money here. Which we, we need to get Larry on. We need to get Larry on so bad. But he's just a bad boy. He's one of those silent giants I talk about that's been there, done that, killed all the rams, all the ranges, killed the monster bears, killed the big old moose, Boone and Crockett caribou. Been over there, killed the billies. You know, he's he's been there and done that, and now he's kind of out of it. Not out, but he's more focused on fishing because the hunting. You got the competition aspect from the eighties, you know, to to now is completely different. Yeah, he he's he's had it. There's good. <laughs> there back then there was a couple of him. Mm-hmm. Multiply that one hundredfold. Now there's a bunch of badasses that got prize thighs, tough minds, are willing to go through the suck and pack stuff out deep. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the areas that he was going, you know, he got he had their permits now, so it's kind of a bummer. But um, back in the eighties, the heyday. Mm-hmm. And for your, um, what do you run for a bag, sleeping bag? So I keep. I don't know, man. I overpack. Do you, I mean, like I train you around. They're like, oh, getting ready for sheep season. Get ready for sheep, sheep shape, sheep shape. I'm like, dude, I'm always in sheep shape, baby. I got a little <laughs> extra weight in, my, in, the, in the belly section, a little extra weight in the thighs and the hips. I'm ready to burn that off in the mountains. I train my thighs. They stay strong year round. So I'm always in sheep shape. But I go heavier than I should. That's because I've been used to carrying cameras and extra tripods and optics and and then carrying the load out on top. But uh, my age is catching up with me in that sense. I'm you know, still in my you know, early 30s, but all the years of contact sports, like competitive contact sports, and then some of these hard pack outs starting to catch up. So I should start thinking more about weight shaving. But um, a sleep bag that I have right now is, uh, you know, it's a zero bag, you know. I think it's like 32, negative 32 degree rated, mm-hmm. so you'll survive, but it's going to be cold at 30, negative 32. Mm-hmm. Um, and if there's, if it's been compressed at all, you'll have cold spots. But uh, I've got some North Face bag. I should get the Gucci Kuyu one because it's going to be lighter, but I actually, I got that from a, a long story from a, I think I told you. I told some. I, I told the story recently, hiking lazy, but mm. I got that back. Somebody gave me a North Face card, a gift mm. card, because I I uh, I literally picked somebody up off the mountain, put them in my Barney pack, and carried them all the way down the mountain in Oregon. Mm-hmm. Um, my wife was in school. They they broke their collarbone and they oh, couldn't okay. get the helicopters down into them. And they're like, "Well, the the rescue team's coming up. They'll be here in two hours." And I was like, "Well." 
do you want to do that? I just took my like first responders course. I can get you out of here. And uh, her husband wasn't strong enough. We tried to do partner assisted carries and all this. Long story short, this this uh, Indian woman that was working for Microsoft and her family was visiting from India. Her husband was visiting from India. We had this communication barrier. Mm-hmm. She broke her collarbone running down, tripped on a water bar on a trail and Ooh. smashed her collarbone. And so she was passing out from the pain. I was like, look, man, this isn't going to work. Let me just carry her. And he's like, oh, yeah, okay, do it. So I carried her off the mountain, training for sheep, sheep <laughs> shape, baby. <laughs> carried a live human, huh? Yeah. And uh, you I packed her in. I packed her. I put, I had a sleeping bag in the pack and like some weights, rocks. And I just ditched the rocks, threw the rocks out in the water. You didn't, you didn't want to add the extra weight on No, her, huh? no. It was, a, it was over a hundred pound pack. I'll say that. Uh, and so... Yeah, she had that sleeping bag up over my head. I made a sling out of my wife's North Face jacket at the time and my dog uh, leashes, right? Mm-hmm. And she propped her – she propped one shoulder up and over and not, not the hurt side. Her hurt side was dangling and immobilized and she just held on to the top of my head, wrapped around this sleeping bag, you know, <laughs> and just strong on my head on the way out. And I hiked her all the way out and met them. The The ambulance was down there. Her family was there. And like, oh my gosh, I'm so thankful, so thankful. And I was like, well, here's my number. Just I'll, I'll, I'll catch the jacket down the road, you know. And uh, the next morning I got their numbers and they were like, yeah, she's fine. And I was like, oh, I'm so glad. Everything okay? No text back, no nothing. And like – Okay, and I finally get back to the apartment, Jordan's apartment, and there's the dog leashes, the North Face jacket, and a gift card to North Face. Mm. And it was like a three hundred dollar gift card, something ridiculous. You oh, know, dude. I went in there. I'm like, I don't even. Thank you, sweet. Went in there. I'm like, I need a new sleeping bag. Uh, so I got that sleeping bag, and I've had that sleeping bag for the last ten years. <laughs> Take it everywhere with me. Nice. nice. On any hunt. On every hunt, basically, so it's it's too much. It weighs too much, but I'd rather have uh, I'd rather be overgunned than undergunned, you know. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I'm the, not even sure what this it is. one's this uh, X bed that I got is super light, mm. super light. And Kuyu's got great bags. X bed, I mean, North Face, uh, they've they've got another warranty, so you can get great deals on good bags. And some people I know, um, like Chris Sheep Shape, Tobias, uh, real hard guide service, um. He was using quilts, one of those down quilt. Mm-hmm. I've got a down quilt stuffed in for a keeper over here when I go on my jogs. Yeah. Yeah, those things are nice. Jin has one of those also. Mm-hmm. So I was thinking about trying that out, but I don't know. I've also gone on other hunts just to, with other buddies on goat hunts, late season goat hunts in September, and I'm like, meh. I'm going to hike up. I'm not even hunting. I'm just going to hang out and film you guys. Like you're, I'll tell you if it's a billy or not, and we'll hike up. And my buddy killed a, his uh, – his first goat, which was really cool. And they're like, you didn't bring a sleeping bag? I'm like, nope, more sleeping pad. And they <laughs> slept in my gear. I put on the Kuyu Downs, like the Ultra. It was a chilly night, but they were nice enough to, like, I was the meat in the sandwich, you oh, know? Gotcha. So I just laid there. <laughs> sandwich. Like, oh, was fine. Slept a couple hours, woke up, did some push-ups. You just like, laid on the ground? It just yeah. in your regular down clothes. <laughs> yeah. That's it. You know, like, let me try this out. No sleeping bag or anything. Like, I'll be fine. It's going to be, I don't know, like maybe break freezing, but let's see what I got. Let me see. I, I can stand up and do squats and whatnot, just side wash. Mm-hmm. But it was kind of like a, it's like a, all my hunts are done. I already killed my goat. I'm like just hanging out with some buddies. So I'm like, man, let's, let's try something out. So I changed socks before I went to sleep. <laughs> let's, let's try something else. You know, <laughs> let's not pack anything and see if I survive. Yeah, right. Well, I'm like, well, I got my rain gear on. I got a pack cover. I'll be fine. We didn't hike up a camp because it was going to be, it was supposed to be bluebird, but you never know with that. I'm like, I don't know. It was, it was wild. Just Did like you guys the, bring a tent? No. Mm-mm. We just, just grabbed out, some spruce limbs. Elements, huh? Yeah, just laid there. So I should brought a little tarp. What do you, what do you usually run for run for a tent? So I've got the Hilleberg Nam Jats, a three person tent. That's a bomb proof tent. I've take that everywhere. Um, but I also run the three person Summit Refuge with the floor. I just have a floor, not like the actual mesh, but 
I run that for solo hunts, and that's about the weight of a bivy sack. It's pretty close to a bivy sack, so now I'm like, man, I'll ditch the bivy. And but it's a double edged sword because you get condensation in there if you're not if you don't set it up correctly and there's not a correct ventilation in there. So then you'd want a bivy sack. But uh, I run a three person refuge. I had some great success with that this year. That was awesome. Um, what what is a bivy sack? So bivy sack is like the only way I can explain it. It's a condom for your sleeping bag. Mm -hmm. It's like a rain jacket for your whole sleeping bag and like there's a little uh, vent at the bottom and then there's you can zip it all the way up with a little bug mesh over the top of your head so you don't you know get chewed on by bugs if it's early season but i've had the net go across my face and just woke up just a big old swollen hickey of <laughs> <laughs> found their way through uh... yeah it's like uh, wake up like oh god i can just see a little like mosquito abdomen red <laughs> pulsing on my face i'm like yep they <laughs> he's full he's full and I, my blood pressure is decreasing they good that night i'll tell you this do you know about if you watch my story, do you know about deodorant, antiperspirant deodorant on bug bites? Mm -mm. Cuts the itch immediate. Really? Immediate. So hot tip, bug bites. You, if you get chewed on by bugs, antiperspirant deodorant. Women, men, doesn't matter. You rub that on a bug bite, guaranteed it'll cut the itch. Faster than any ailment there is. Wow. Yep. Hot tip. Antiperspirant has, has to be. Huh? It's the antiperspirant. You can't just put deodorant. It has to have antiperspirant deodorant. It's like, I believe like the sweating or something like that and like the moisture, that's what gets it to itch. I'm not sure exactly the science behind it. All I know is that antiperspirant works. Hmm. I see. So the bag that I run is a zero. That was like a long rabbit hole. So, but it's so a zero to 32, would, something like would that. You would you suggest that anybody that wanted to come and do a hunt like this what degree bag is like all around good dude alaska can be 60 and sunny even in september early october it might be a little bit less but like you could have zero nights depending on your elevation you could have 60 and sunny so i go with a like a heavier bag and i always bring it with me and i'd rather be over bag than under bagged because mm -hmm. um, you can unzip it you don't have to encase yourself with it just unzip it and lay it over you like a quilt and you're fine mm -hmm. um but i'd rather especially in your survival situation or anything like that you're like yep i'd rather be warm than cold and mm -hmm. some people are just mentally tough that's why i'm like yeah i'll just let me try it without anything <laughs> but he's like you're crazy I'm like ah, actually it wasn't that bad i wouldn't want to do that for many nights but you know i, I i've I, I can do that. I can do that pretty regularly, semi-regularly, and I have done it for sheep and other goats and stuff like that when I actually needed to. But I plan to go up and have a rough night because mm -hmm. we're only going to go up. We're going to go kill these goats or goat and then come back down three up. You know, two goats down or whatever. But. See, see, what I'm always worried is is uh, if you do get in a situation where you have to be out there longer than you expected mm -hmm. and you're like not prepared. Oh yeah. So I think that's the kind of things that. I wouldn't have the cojones to go out there under underprepared just to test it, you know? <laughs> You'd be surprised what type of cojones you have when um, you need them. Mm -hmm. It just happens. You're like, I don't, I don't know if I'm ready. It's like, well. Well, like my story I was telling you before of where you left a – where I left my pack in the truck, thought it was going to be a quick little day hunt. Yeah. And chasing some elk through some fog, didn't it? know how to get back to the truck went down the wrong canyon truck wasn't at the bottom got dark and me and my buddy were like we're staying out here tonight with nothing and had a had a cuddle underneath a spruce that's at the, <laughs> at the stage where you look at each other uh -huh. you lift up well i guess so we've got sunglasses on right now but you say big spoon or a little spoon. Uh, well, this <laughs> this guy, this this is reed who went on my caribou hunt who you mm -hmm. seen who's six two Pushing 300 pounds. Oh, he's, so. he's not a little spoon. He's so, like a soup serving ladle. Yeah, so. Get on over here. <laughs> so I was ladled, but I, w I was the little spoon. The whole night. Uh -huh. He rolls over and gets real small. And you're like, I guess I'll kick a leg up. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> and I had, I had like this uh, Carhartt jacket, you know, and we laid it over both of us and just cuddled away i mean they're, they're, when you're in a survival situation mm -hmm. i mean there ain't no shame in the game i mean oh, like yeah. and there's no like oh it's homo or anything like that no nothing none of that matters it does not mm -hmm. matter you might have to if somebody's dying 
you have to get naked and crawl into a sleeping bag, strip them down, sleeping bag, and you are skin to skin. You have to. It will save lives. And some yeah. people are like, oh yeah, I, I think don't. that was the last thing on last thing on my, our mind. I, well, if if it came to that, but when you when you but come you, in, when when you tell the story, you're like, come on, get, <laughs> what, think, what's going on in there? <laughs> think about this. A lot of the individuals when you when you tell that to someone who may you know. Basically, if you have the wherewithal to say, yeah, no, I don't want to get uh, – not going to get naked with you, you're all right. You're going to be fine. But a lot of the times when you, you're talking to somebody and they're hypothermic, they're not there, dude. They're checked out mentally and you're like, no, I am telling you what is happening. And they're like, yep, they just – they will stand yeah, there. Like absolutely. I've been in some situations where we had to get warm. It mm-hmm. was like, yep, this is – we we've, we've got to do this. Mm-hmm. Well, it's different if your buddy's asking you to, you know, strip down and get warm and it's like 70 degrees out. <laughs> <laughs> you look like, hypothermic. Get on over here. Like, what are you talking about? Man? Get talking out of here. About? We're just out here fishing, <laughs> man. Like, Come on, man. It's like it's bluebird out. What do you mean? This is glacier. This is glaciated. Get on over here. You don't understand. You're skin hypothermic. Skin. Maui style. <laughs> you gotta stay warm. <laughs> what? Uh, yeah, so like just, my wife, she's been really cold there. before, but that 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 works out really good. Like you know, one of those situations. Mm-hmm. Like, all right, well, mm-hmm. we when, need to stay you, warm. When you got your cute little lady, you're like, yeah, I gotta, really I gotta warm you. Yeah. No, I've been I've been hypothermic before, where somebody's like, hey man, you you need to get over here. This is this ain't good. You know, mm-hmm. like. Uh, why was this your was this your time where you didn't bring a sleeping bag out? <laughs> no, no, it was actually on a show. I don't even know if they aired it. I didn't watch it, but uh, a show that I did years ago, and we were hiking through, um, just actually the what is that called? The Tordrillos and um, Strandline Lake. And we were hiking up and over glaciers, and it was just like raining and snow. We were post holing and sweaty, and we got down like I don't even know what the hell we're gonna do. You know, it, we couldn't get a fire going or nothing. So it was, it was, uh, it was like, yeah, unzip, get the hands, get the hands like on on each other's chest, and we're like kind of holding each other. Like this ain't working. This is not working. He's like, I don't know what we're going to do. He's like, you do the only thing we can do is start running. I'm like, yeah, yeah, you're right. I was just listening at that stage because I was not, I wasn't here. I wasn't, I wasn't checked in mentally. I'm like, yeah, okay. You know, I remember and, uh, and, uh, what was it? Like fifth grade, Ben Affleck did when he was a kid, the adventures was it the adventures of the Sukumi. It was a video that we watched about like oceanography and Ben Affleck was a kid and they did this. They, it was really cool video um, on like they were on a boat and they were out doing ocean exploring. I can't remember the name. If you're listening to this, please give us the name. But it was one of Ben Affleck when he was just like a, he was just a young buck, just a kid, like prepubescent teen. And uh, I'll never forget, somebody got, the captain got hypothermic, and we are in fifth grade watching this, and they had to strip naked and, like, get in a sleeping bag. And now thinking about it, I'm like, man, we watched that in fifth grade. I should look that up on the phone. This is where we need, like, a, we need a fact checker. We need a fact checker. But I remember a hypothermic situation where they, they had to go skin to skin, and that was, like, everyone in the class was like, oh, well, that's weird. I mean, obviously, it was you know elementary mm-hmm. school, Pioneer Peak Elementary, right down the road from us. So, like, it was it was in a kid version, but they they talked about some really cool things in the uh, the adventures of Sukumi or the adventures of whatever. But the hmm. it was Ben Affleck. Hmm. I'm gonna Google it real quick. Ben Affleck, and what was the what was the lesson? The, were, were the they lesson like, was to say how to save somebody's life if they become mm-hmm. hypothermic. Okay, so that was part of the show. That was oh, absolutely part of it. And I don't know, I can't, I, I'm not sure if the acting was really good or what. It wasn't like the captain snuggling little Ben Affleck. Like I can't remember who. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember who got with the or who was actually it, was, the characters was, but I always remember that. I'm like oh, that's how you save somebody's life if they become hypothermic. Uh, you crawl in with the captain. Obviously, dude, that's uh, fifth grade. How many years ago? That? 20 years ago. And I remember Ben Affleck and, you know. Um, uh, that's funny. But, yeah, going back to my story, when I was stu- snuggling with my big buddy Reed, 
we thought we were going west. And I wake up. Of course, I'm like, all right, the sun's up. We got we got to get moving. We got to get out of here, buddy. Reed's like, oh, just give me 15 more minutes. <laughs> and I'm just, I'm just like, no, dude, we got to get out of here. And so we wake up, and where I thought we were going west, the sun rose. So I'm like, that is east. We are com- 180 degrees turned around, but so we got to head back the other way. Mm. It's the voyage of the Mimi. Voyage of the Mimi. Look it up. Voyage. Check it out. Little Ben Affleck. Voyage of the Mimi. <laughs> is that bringing back? Totally. Look at him in his Arctic. Oh, wow. This is the place where some of the writers from... Okay, Voyage of the Mimi, everybody. Voyage of the Mimi. If you want to look it up, Ben Affleck and this captain and hypothermia, I don't know what type of time you have, but check that out. Uh, <laughs> 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 Thank you, Google. You're my friend. Uh, oh, that's God. Awesome. That is hilarious. So... So other important things in your pack that we should go over. I mean, it's so, you, like, so we went over tent. Always got to have rain gear. Every hunt rain you go gear. on in Alaska, no matter mm-hmm. what, you always have rain gear. And my thing with hunting, do not leave your pack. Don't leave it. I've left it, tried to find it. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Where's my pack? Mm-hmm. That was dumb. And, you know, by luck, you find it, even if you don't put drop a pin with Onyx. But before all that, uh, before the Onyx and GPS is them being convenient. Or having the money for a GPS and just going out because I wanted to be successful. I've done a few stupid things. So, always keep your pack. 100%. Mm-hmm. Always keep your pack all the way. Another hot tip. Yeah, uh, always. Always keep your pack. And then I always – I mean, so you can ditch food and your tent and everything like that. But if you don't have your sleeping bag and like a tra- – uh, I take these uh, contractor trash bags with me and align my pack so that my packs just don't smell like a – you know. Mm-hmm rotten dead rotten critter everywhere i go even if you wash them mm-hmm. i always have put, those bags so you put, can split put them the and, meat in your game bag mm-hmm. slide it in those contractor bags slide that in your pack yep but you, as soon as you get back to camp you gotta pull it out of that yeah absolutely so, you take it out 100 mm-hmm. percent. So it but breathe. i always do that depending on the pack out and how long it's going to be but um i will always bring those contractor trash bags and wrap my stuff up and like the sea to summit that's always nice and the sea to summit if you have a big enough sea to summit which um like a roll top bag i used to have a really big one i don't know where my stuff goes dude i'm missing a raft right now i don't even know where the hell it is <laughs> just wait till your your boy grows up and he starts borrowing your stuff and then and then you're like where the heck is my stuff yeah <sighs> I, I apologize for my dad that i did that to him so many times stole it stole stuff but it's coming back to me pops yeah oh yeah <laughs> it comes back it comes back it's funny my dad he's he uh now even now if we ever go on adventures he always buys brand new stuff i'm like dad you have all this stuff he's like i don't know what you guys have taken from my stash so he buys brand new stuff i'm like mm-hmm. dude whatever uh but yeah, I used to break fishing poles. Um, but what, lose what, stuff. Was your was your dad kind of like mine, where he's like, somebody stole it. Somebody, you t- you took my stuff, and then like a week later, he finds it. He's like, oh, I guess I that's guess what, I put it over. Here. <laughs> <laughs> that's what my dad always thinks. Somebody's robbing. Him. That's no, I didn't have that relationship with my dad. Uh, <laughs> I didn't, yeah, I mean, like we've been real touch and go with our relationship. Just over the years, mm-hmm. the only thing we can actually do is hunt. But, um, yeah, with my old man, he just always buys new stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, where did all the good stuff go? So, you know, Augie would high grade it. My brother, I'm like, well, hey, you got anything? Can I have that? You know, so we've traded a lot of gear over the years going back and forth. But Mm -hmm. now I got my own gear, my own thing, my own, all my own stuff where Mm -hmm. like all dad's old stuff. I'm like, oh, that was cool back in the 80s. Um, But like one of the first hunts I went on, people just – my friend Ryan Ryan Pauling who drew – he was one of the ones that drew like Delta, Toke, Delta every other year mm-hmm. for sheep. And he went and he killed a bunch of sheep mm-hmm. and then uh, in high school with his dad and then we all linked up and he's like, well, do you got any gear? And I was like, yeah, I got gear. And I show up like army fatigues, like cotton army fatigues. <laughs> like, oh my god, you're going to die. Okay. I'm like, well, you know, I want to go out there and mm-hmm. better, better be tough or – 
Yeah, I think get, we've all been there. Of, get tough or die. Of, if you want to do the hunt, you just go with what you got. You got to rock what you got. Spend money on tags, not gear. Yeah, yep, exactly. And then the whole thing, like, with mental toughness, man, like, you've got to be mentally tough. Like, I've done full hunts in hip boots, sheep hunts. Mm-hmm. Were they successful? No. <laughs> but but I went there. hard and I learned mental you, toughness. You learned some lessons? I'm like, nope. Are you cold, man? Nope, not at all. Mm-hmm. Nope. Somebody else will tell you when you're really cold because you're going to be very irrational and weird. When you're when you're cuddling in, above normal, they let you know. Yeah, above normal weird for me. <laughs> but um, yeah, at any rate, uh, do, you, do you run a uh, sleeping pad? Yeah, yeah. I always bring a sleeping pad, inflatable sleeping pad, for sure. Uh, it just helps me sleep a little bit better. Mm-hmm. Um, Back in my younger days, I used to make fun of my dad. You know, he threw out his pad and mm-hmm. his de- his desert pack. You know, I'm like. You're so you're so lame, man. You just throw it out on the ground here. Wake up with a pine cone digging into your ribs. But now nowadays I'm like, oh man, I need a pad. Mm. I need a cot. I need something. <laughs> Help me. Help me. Uh-huh. Um, well it depends. Every hunt is different. Um it just everything is so different in Alaska to be prepared. hmm You kinda gotta have a wide range of or you kind of got to know what you're going to get into. Right. But here's the thing. I have a base pack for everything. Mm-hmm. No matter what. Like my base pair down is for everything. You've got my kill kit. It just matters of the size of the game bags essentially. Mm-hmm. And like you can – for me, some people are like, yeah, oh, yeah, I need to have everything is so precise. And I need this and that and this and that. I'm like, dude, you're focused hours on that. And like I'm already hours this way. I'll go kill it before you do. You even think about even getting there because you're, you're worried about dissecting your bag. And I'm going to focus my effort elsewhere, right? Mm-hmm. So essentials – is you need if you if you don't have a good tent you better have a good bivy sack right you got to have a sleeping bag rain gear is essential good footwear essential gaiters not necessarily essential but pretty freaking essential if you want to keep your feet kind of dry right Mm -hmm. um which dry feet will make you last a lot longer a lot longer 100 Mm -hmm. and then duct tape will make you last a lot longer screw all the all of the uh new skins and you know Mole skin. Mm-hmm. Screw all that, dude. Duct tape. Even if you get a hardcore freaking blister, get your feet dry, get that blister dry, and make sure that you put a good layer of duct tape over that mm-hmm. bitch. Mm-hmm. And that will save your hunt 100%. So if somebody's bitching out, be like, nope, no, I'm going to take care of your feet. That mole skin's for suck ass. That, that stuff sucks. Mm-hmm. I'm going to duct tape your feet, and I'll say, like, oh, I don't really, it doesn't, it's fine. Mm-hmm. So duct tape will save your feet. So that's like something that's a must. I wrap that around my uh, whip it. And now there's this whip it. Like, dude, I take this whip it. It's a climbing, you know, hiking self-arrest claw, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like a trekking pole and I just carry it on. Some people go devil whippets, but you take the tip of this thing off, wheel mm-hmm. devil one of those. You can put that through your calf. Mm-hmm. Austin's kind of shown me what a whip it is. It kind of looks like a trekking pole and on the top of it's got a... Mini, mini scythe looking like a pickaxe it's like a climbing pick, axe yeah. but it's mini right and it's mm-hmm. got a little shelf and it's got a rubber ran down further so you can grab it if you're falling but like two of them that might be too much mm-hmm. uh, what, what you mean two two of the heads or two do you run do you run two sticks just one head like that Is yeah that one one whip it mm-hmm and, and the other one's just a regular trekking mm-hmm. pole. And the key behind that is don't use those when you're stalking an animal. Only use those, you know, if you're in country of animals, put them on your back because that metal clanging will screw them up. I say that and I've used them before in life and death. You're like, yep, I'd rather have this out and scare the animal than slip and fall in goat country. Mm-hmm. Um, but in sheep country, goat country, I always have that. Um, and then when I'm moose hunting, I hunt completely different than moose. It just depends on the country and where I'm at. Uh, but I have the same kill kit essentially, mm-hmm. and like the gloves, it just kind of changes uh, what I actually have in my my pack. Mm-hmm. So, um, brain gear is essential, sleeping bag essential, bivy sack, tent may not be essential if you have a bivy sack, depending on how much time you're going to spend out. When I'm moose hunting, I 100% take two 10 by 12 tarps. You need two 10 mm-hmm. by 12 tarps, 100%. Yeah, tarps are Keep the meat clean. Awesome. And you can set a tarp up and stay underneath that. Start a fire if you get out too far away from camp or whatever. You don't know where you're at. Um, Do you take like those lightweight tents? 
like those super, you know, like almost, my, uh, almost looks like, yeah. Take yeah, my like, summit. Yeah, like your summit. Yeah. Or I mean, do, you t- do you take like the Walmart no, gray and blue I, tarp? I'm taking, uh, well, yeah, I, I got blue tarp. I'm part of the blue tarp gang. Mm-hmm. When you're hunting now, I'm like, oh, I want to be concealed. I'm like, yeah, BS, dude. I want to, hey, whoever makes tarps, can you guys make a badass, like, mean blaze orange tarp because i want somebody who's flying over and i'm on a moose i don't want them landing and waking up and thinking they're going to shoot the moose the next day you know Mm -hmm. like yeah i want everybody to know here that i'm here so like i do have some tarps that are camo but i'm like "Eh, i'd rather just use a blue tarp or the brightest damn tarp that i can find so Mm -hmm. bringing a couple of those i'll have tarps in my pack kill kit in the pack because during moose season usually if you're down in the thick you you're near a tree so you can start a fire basically if you have a piece of paracord or a couple pieces of paracord you can set up mm-hmm. a little pop a little pop tent which is then, a, which is a good idea to put in your little survival kit some 550 or parachute yeah, cord and i have that in my kill kit so i'll bring a tarp generally speaking with a goat and sheep hunt i don't bring a tarp i'll bring my tent and my tent is the tarp type of thing mm-hmm. but uh, when i'm moose hunting down low that's a completely different uh, ball game, but um, I bring a tarp for that. And then for sheep hunting, um, I'll have a tent, and I can leave the tent behind if I'm going up a drainage, but usually I just try to keep everything with me mm-hmm. so a bear doesn't cut the, the, the hunt short by destroying extra extra goodies. Um, and then what I always carry with me, whether I leave it in the truck or not, I plan overage. You know, overage for a few days. Then, depending on the weather and what's happening, I've got I go after weather windows. Like the best time to go is when it's going to be nice. First, you can't see sheep, can't see goat when it's um, gnarly. So I'd rather wait, and I've got time. Time is my friend. Mm-hmm. That's the biggest factor of success. But I'll bring extra food, and then I'll have a uh, a a tote in my truck where I bring a pack raft, depending on the river conditions creek conditions etc and that's like a game time decision where i'll either leave it or bring it sometimes i kick myself or bring it sometimes you know i'm like oh man that was really badass that i brought that that made the hunt mm-hmm. and that it saved hunt so i always bring a pack raft there's always a pack raft in the truck mm-hmm. regardless even if i got to do shuttles or if i got to walk down but i've been using pack crafts oh uh, shoot it's at least 2008 mm-hmm. and now uh, pack crafts you've got a alpaca pack raft Alpaca pack rafts are the one to get. There's other ones out there. I do not recommend the NRS one unless they've changed their game recently, but they won't go over beaver dams and, and uh, some of like the, the hard gravel bro- bottoms and the glaciated drainage. So like alpaca pack rafts are bad ass. Mm. And if you bring a roll of tieback tape with you, like I've seen, I've never had the issue, knock on wood, but... I've seen people get their rafts shredded by bears and they use that, they got it really dry, put a tarp over it, dried it out, used tie back tape over the top mm-hmm. and they were still in the game. They could still float out. But oh, the wow. Apaca the pack rafts have like some technology where you can unzip the tubes and I believe the, the technology was created, uh, if this is a correction, let me know, but I believe the technology was created for being able to pack raft the Grand Canyon because you have to have a multi-tube mm-hmm. raft. So, so you, could adjust you can it. unzip and put different tubes inside the mm-hmm. pack raft. So you can unzip that tube, put your meat in your gear at the edge of the water inside those tubes, zip it back up, pump it up, and then your, your, your raft is just sitting low. Mm-hmm. And it's tracking better. And it's pretty sweet. Hmm. So, I, haven't, I haven't used pack rafts before, but it seems like a game changer. Could be. Could be. If if I didn't have the money, if I was like, oh, I'm going to save up for a boat or I want a four-wheeler or I want, you know, I'm saving up for a dirt bike or a meat, you know, just anything that's going to help you get that much further or out that much quicker, 100% hands down, pack wrap. Pack wrap was the first thing that I bought. Still to this day, I have multiple pack rafts, and they are my friend. And I've big leagued the shit out of people deep in the backcountry where all of a sudden they're like, oh, my God, you guys got one. Yep. Like, well, it's going to take you a couple weeks to get out. Like, nope. Pack raft. Boom. I'm out in a couple hours. Hmm. Instead of no tree. Oh, dude. Game changer. Pack rafts are badass. Hmm. I have big league guides in the backcountry. I won't mention the situation, but I big leagued a guide, and it felt really good. Guess I'm, I'm making my investment. 
you better get a pack wrap. But the key is to get the right pack wrap. You obviously like one person is fine for like a llama, like a Denali. I think it's called a llama Denali llama pack raft, alpaca pack raft, and that one's fine and you can get out. But any amount of load. It's, it's tough. You're going to want to get an unrigged Explorer or you're going to want to get the new BHA series. I think that's what they're called. But you have like a, a Forager. I would suggest if I was to get a raft, I would get the Mule, the unrigged Explorer, which I have the Mule and the unrigged Explorer. I would do the unrigged Explorer first, which is my, my original pack raft. Still don't have any holes, nothing in it. It's badass. I've gone over beaver dams. Glaciers, drag that damn thing a mile on a gravel road, etc. Unrigged Explorer, the mule. But if you've got two people and you're going for sheep, or you got one person and you're looking for caribou or something bigger, I would go with the forager. But I would go with those three hundred percent. Okay, because I think that one of the things we're going to have to do for my buffalo hunt is mm. possibly pack wraps. Did Ranella pack raft? He did. he did. He did. He did. Yeah. He did. And you can. And do he almost that. drowned. But <laughs> I don't know. Ranella doesn't lift weights. It doesn't seem like. I don't know. It doesn't look like he lifts weights. He might do yoga or something like that. I don't know. I think Batellus might. He might lift weights. He looks a little bit sick. Mm-hmm. The eagle. The eagle. The Laughing Eagle. Yeah. So yeah, what, I'm not. I'm not sure, but I know that. I know that during that hunt that they did pack craft the buffalo out, and, mm-hmm. and you'll get wet. And he, but he, he had a full like scuba suit on. And dry suits, key dry too. Suit, yeah, you can get away with chest waders, but you don't want to go in with those. They, 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 those might suck you down, but usually, if you go in with chest waders, it compresses around and it doesn't go down. And if you got a life jacket, you definitely have to bring a life jacket or secure something that is going to keep. Like I, I took out the seat before mm-hmm. and um, used the seat, inflated the seat, but attached it to. Um, like my bino harness to keep my head up out of water. If I was mm-hmm. to go in, mm-hmm. at least I had something. But real quick sidebar, Putellus or Ranella? For what? Everything. I don't know. Putellus all day. You're saying Putellus? Oh, yeah, dude. Putellus is the brains and the brawn. Uh-huh. And I think that he'd win in weightlifting, animal packing, and probably street fighting. Mm-hmm. Oh, just like overall, overall, overall skill. Overall man. 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 Man meat. Manimal. Mm. I'd yeah. say Putellus. Hands down, Putellus. That mm-hmm. was one thing I had in the notes. Mm-hmm. I think I think you're 100% right if if you were to set him up skill set to skill set. But the one thing that Steve has is he he has the way with the words. He has the host. He's got the... Verbal jiu He's the face. Yep. He's got verbal judo like no other, for mm-hmm. sure. Mm-hmm. I, wonder, I wonder if the Latvian Eagle has more concussions. I don't know. Why would he have more concussions? I don't know if he played contact sports or anything like that. I'm not sure if Ranella did either, really. I don't think any of them were, are into sports at all. Yeah. That's where I, like, I got a real, you know, like the, the, was it CTE? The concussion. Yeah. I got something to fall back on. Mm-hmm. If you, <laughs> you got something to blame. Yeah, I got something to blame. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you're always for a loss of words. Yeah. All that, all them, uh, them, them uh, concussions. All them <laughs> As you forget it. <laughs> <laughs> As you forget what the word is. Yeah. Oh, uh, the hits man. of the dome piece, man. What do you use? Okay. Back to our gear bomb here. Ra- <laughs> wrap, it, wrap it back in. What do you use for uh, water purifying? Ooh, depends on the hunt. Mm-hmm. Depends on the hunt. But I've got a Katadyne uh, Life Straw. Um, that Kalen gave me a long time ago uh, for one of our float moose hunts. That was cool, but the filter kind of ran out, so we were all sucking water. You know, it's like trying to get it out, just dehydrated. Like, you get dehydrated <laughs> just trying to get the water out of that damn thing. But I've got a Katadyne um, pump system that works really good, mm-hmm. which I don't know. That That's actually one of those things that disappeared. My short but excellent memory it was on a sheep hunt with me, but I don't know where the hell that thing went. That thing's gone. But a lot of times when I get up above and I know that there's no beavers in the drainage that I'm in for um, sheep and uh, goat hunts, like, yeah, I'm just going to drink right off the side of the mountain. But yeah. I also have the gut of a coyote. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> just ran- You could rance in a deer. I could probably drink from a beaver pond to be fine. Yeah. 
You want to risk that? <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. Yeah, this I one, I went on a, a hunt. Fever, fever, one of these hunts where I biked in and pack rafted out. And um, we got some water. We boiled the water. We were drinking water. We were fine. And then we get back and uh, Bridger, Bridger Van Ness, he, <laughs> he, he, like, I'm like, hey, how you doing after the hunt? He's like, I'm not doing so good. I think I need to go to the hospital. I'm like, what's up? He's like, I've been on the toilet for like three days. <laughs> like, are you, do you want me to come get you? He's like, no, I think my dad's going to grab me. And his dad like took him. Like he had some like blood out of mouth, body. He was bad. Oh, wow. Yeah. He was really bad. And I don't know what he had eaten. So I'm not sure. Like I never verified, but he was good after a couple of weeks. I think he just had like Giardia real bad. <laughs> so, and, like, and old coyote get was doing fine. I'm huh? fine today. I woke up I'm like, man, you want to go on another bear hunt? He's like, no, I'm not good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so higher up in the mountains, you don't even worry about it. I run no. Life Straw for just as a backup, and then I got one of those squeeze purifying filters. Those K nine hand pumps are really nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they do. They take forever, though. The hand pumps, yeah, take forever. The uh -huh. one the actual pump, yeah. I don't know what it's called, what model, but mm -hmm. that works really good. Yeah, and the good th or the thing that I like about those like hand pumps, they fix right up to your Nalgene um, bottle. So you mm. could just screw it on there. But if you're going to filter a lot of water at once, either boil it is kind of a good option or that squeeze if you're going to just be like, let's go. Mm. Um, what about stove? What do you run for a stove? i got a couple. I have um, a Katadyne stove. I believe it's Katadyne. opt uh Optimus? Optimus Prime? <laughs> I think that's a Transformer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I, I should go grab it. I've got a couple extra ones uh, right there. But there is K-Denine. It's like some free stride bills. I believe it's part of uh, like a conglomerate of brands. Mm. But um, I have that. And then I've got a jet boil that just refuses to die. Mm -hmm. the, the igniter goes out, but it's still... Psh, I used to use a lighter. I always bring a lighter with me, a couple of them. Mm -hmm. That's how you can tell how if I'm nervous or not for a hunt is if I bring multiple Bic lighters. Yeah. Like, why do I have a lighter and I've got 10 lighters in each of these, uh, you know, I all my gear? I think that's in my survival kit. I think I have like three of them, and then I always put one in my pocket too just to be extra safe. Mm. But I got the MSR. Um, I, or I heard a rumor that jet boil isn't – or is a little anti. Oh, they're anti? Mm-hmm. So that's hmm. what I went with the MSR. Um, but I love it, man. It's nice. It's the MSR anti-wind stove, so you light on anything. So you got your stove. What what do we got there? Is it Optimus Prime? or It is actually is an Optimus. And I believe it's part of the Katadyne family. But you've got to bring your own pot. Oh, okay. Or pan. Oh, it's one of those little guys. Mm -hmm, Just see? the attachment. Boom. But. Okay. Oh, shit. I thought this one actually like folded out. I have one that goes in and folds across. Like I've got a whole Optimus stove, Optimus of Sweden. Uh, and Mark Morrow. Mike Morrow. God, I'm an idiot. Uh, Mike Morrow, Morrow Photography. He uh, he hooked me up with that, which was pretty cool. Okay. And um, he was buddies with Ben Knapp. Rest in peace, brother. Um, so thanks for that, Mr. Morrow. So that is uh, – have you had problems with those in the wind? <clears throat> yeah, that's just kind of one of the things is, okay. is wind and it's not as stable. But you can cook in it a lot easier and – um, I don't know. It's just it's super depends. lightweight. What do you what do you bring for a pot or a cup or then? You know what? I've been hiking in more with real food. Like I'll stop wherever I go before I leave town, depending on the direction. Grab like chicken fingers and JoJo's and like a sandwich, boar's head, Cheetos, mm -hmm. stuff that I know that I'm going to want to hammer when I'm hungry. Sometimes I. Um, I get that flow. I get the flow state of the hunt, and food doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Water. Mm. Like, I mean, you're, like you're talking like short trips. Or, no, I'm talking like extended trips, man. Like obviously, you need like enough. Layers? 
Nah, I'll, I will eat food, absolutely. But when it's go time, like on the day of or something like that, I usually don't eat breakfast. Um, but I, I do eat throughout the day. But mm-hmm. like looking at a cliff bar or something like that, I'm not. it's not very appealing to me. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people are like, hey, you need to eat. You haven't eaten in a day and a half. I'm like, oh, yeah, I probably should. Mm-hmm. And so I'll eat something real unhealthy like a chewy bar. But it has just enough like calories and sugar to kind of keep me moving. Mm-hmm. And I don't even notice a crash because I'm looking at an animal. Mm-hmm. And usually that's when I'm like, yeah, target acquired. And I'm pretty substantially like serious about it. But yeah. that being said, like on a moose hunt, like, yeah, I'll have lazy days where I'm like, yeah, let me just go ahead and binge eat. Mm-hmm. You know, and then after it's all done, I got a sheep on my back and I'm starving. It's like, yeah. I didn't need a mountain house yesterday or the day before. I want to eat two right now. Mm-hmm. Then, then you gorge like a crocodile. Yeah, <laughs> like, oh, God. <laughs> Just wake up, roll over, slug down a bunch of water. I'm like, oh, man, I'm going to have to hike all the way down tomorrow. But it's worth it. Mm-hmm. I'm like I'm like opposite. I have to, especially on long hunts or if we're hiking all day long, you know, from ridge to ridge. Um, I gotta have those, I gotta have snacks, little Snickers bar, trail mix, you know, that helps keep me going. Yeah. Salami and, and crackers. And, I'll you know. eat, I'll eat along the way, but usually it's if I'm with somebody or like sometimes I have to remember myself, like, Hey, I should eat something like on my, Snack my time. doll sheep hunt, like classic, like what I've been doing lately is I always like for a good luck thing, I started doing it, um, I'll buy a whole pizza right before I leave, you know, or two pizzas and I'll eat one. I'm like, ah, I got half a pizza, you know, mm-hmm. half a pie. And so I'll bring <laughs> that with me, fold it up. It'll get all wet and soggy. I'll eat at it. And then, mm-hmm. like, yeah, I probably shouldn't eat pizza after three days. Just sitting out <laughs> chilling, you know. <laughs> but like, I'll do that. Like I'll hike in food and eat that first. And like I'm more apt to eat that than eat another freeze-dried meal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, but just, it depends on the hunt. And like, obviously on moose hunts, like that's a hunt where I'll wake up and I'm, if I'll get pissed if people are like, Oh, let's cook a breakfast or let's hang out. I'm like, we're, we're already late. Like I start getting into a frenzy. I'm like, okay, I'm losing control of this hunt. We're going to miss an opportunity in a swamp because we're not there. And I'm like, nope, let's go. I can get in the boat now. You are like, nope. the exact same as me in that situation. Like my dad's just taking his sweet time. We're like the elk are already halfway up the mountain. Let's go, bud. And he's like, you just need to, you just need to relax, man. We're, we'll get there. I'm like, we got to go. We got to go. Why are you making freaking biscuits and gravy right now? <laughs> and like, I know some guys are at different places in the hunt. And like you go, you got three, you got to be evenly matched. But um, like that just, just chaps my ass. And sometimes it's so weird. Hunts are so weird. They can be, you can be taking your time and there goes the whole herd. You're like, God oh, damn it. They're gone. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden the lone bull walks out and he's he, he had a lazy morning and he walks right in front of you. And if you would have been up there, you would have missed that and you wouldn't have even seen him. So I try to take that in more and not try to like ruin the experience. But at the same time, I would rather be hungry about the hunt and go and do answer that Every time that I don't answer that little voice in my head that says, stay five minutes longer, wake up five minutes earlier, no, mm-hmm. we need to hike over that ridge. When I don't listen to that little voice, I usually don't go home with a critter. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times when I get in that flow state where like, I, you know, I'm listening to the voice, I'm listening, to, okay, this is what you need to be doing to be successful – Food and water aren't high on that priority mm-hmm. list, hmm. which is weird, you know. But that's – I mean you can't do that for long. Obviously, you'll have crashes and whatnot. But that's kind of where some of that dad bod mm-hmm. really plays into my favor. Yeah. <laughs> burn burn a little of your extra winter weight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a little of that extra. And then obviously your body needs so much, but you can push your body beyond. I've been on hunts before. Where going on like day two of not having water and my brother and I had an orange. I'm like, why you found an orange in your pack? We're going to eat that. So we ate this orange that saved our ass and we, we got down to water, but it was 
I'll never forget that. That was something else, man. Water, you need it 100%, especially if you're if you're sweating your ass off. You need that water. Mm-hmm. You can go a long way without food. And, like, I know some guys are, uh, like, they don't have very much extra fat on their body. Um, but you can go a long time without food. Mm-hmm. Your body is just going to eat itself, which is you'll 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 survive. Mm-hmm. But water is something you need. Water is crucial. At least for me, I can't say that for like everybody. Everybody's different, right? But which it's hard to drink when you're on those cold days. You you might be dehydrated and you don't feel thirsty because it's cold. Mm-hmm. But you gotta force it down sometimes. Well, that's the other thing. Like before I go out, I eat big heavy meals, and like I'll I will try to hammer water. Mm-hmm. I just get hydrated yeah. before I leave for a big hunt. Just like really pound water mm-hmm. before you go. A, like that's a great hot tip. Carbo loading mm-hmm. before Come. before marathon. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it really helps, man. Just being mentally right for those hunts, having what I what I need, and then uh, having an abundance. I'm like a, like a hoarder almost when I go up. I'm like, God, I don't I don't even need this food, and at the end kill an animal and i'm like oh i better just ditch these two mountain houses there's just so much weight <laughs> <laughs> ditching chewy bars and mountain houses you know it's like uh it's dumb mm-hmm. so i guess we've kind of covered a lot of things that are in our pack what um pack do you run we went over it during our live instagram but i don't think we've talked about it here mm-hmm. so right now i've got the 7800 uh, icon pro or maybe it's just a pro now. I'm not exactly sure, but um, I actually got that on warranty because I used to have the 7200 from Kuyu. From Kuyu, mm-hmm. I run that. I used to run a Barney's, and I still rock Barney's. Depending, like I'll, I'll bring that thing out. That thing's meant for the apocalypse. Mm-hmm. One thing that I've heard about those Bar- Barney packs, and especially looking at it in comparison right here in the old man garage, that, and I see what people are saying. The Barney pack is wide. And like going through brush and stuff, how do you feel about that? I've heard people like complain about how wide it is, brush just grabbing you and alders. And- when you go through the alder jungle gym, mm-hmm. any pack is hell. Mm-hmm. Barney packs, especially if you have that extension bar that goes over the top, mm-hmm. that'll catch up and that will make you have a really long day. Um, but yeah, Barney packs are they're sweet, man. Mm-hmm. Um, Kevin runs a great outfit. Those packs, he's, he's still doing. He's doing upgrades to the packs. He's doing some cool stuff. I I saw him amongst the the COVID craziness. He uh, he's he's got some new things coming out. Hip belts and different cinch system, and or maybe he's already had that cinch, cinch cool. system. But I've seen some stuff that he's doing. So he's making he's making good time of this uh, distancing, and he's actually essential right now. So he's staying open. He's making deliveries. Um, really doing a lot of cool stuff in that in that realm for people who don't want to leave. He'll he'll deliver it to your door for survival stuff, all the gear that he's got, tents, you name it. Mm-hmm. So people are prepping, and he's uh, hand delivering prep gear, which is pretty pretty cool. Yeah, sweet. sweet. Yeah, those essential businesses are thriving right now. Yep, yep, and that's uh, Barney's just been long. Uh, long known supporter of the guide industry and hunting hardcore hunting in Alaska. Mm-hmm. You know, they were before the Kuyu, before the Sitka, Bob Hodson and my dad go way back, but um, they make bomber gear, man. Mm-hmm. It's, it's gear that doesn't need warranty. It is a warranty, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. that stuff's meant for the end of the world. And uh, I still have old jackets that Bob used to make uh, and I'll rock those during the winter time. And uh, I don't know where that gear went, actually. I think Augie's got them. Augie's got them squirreled away. But just gear that's, you know, been around since the 90s. Yeah. And it's running on 20, 30 years of use. So, um, I run the 7200 Icon mm-hmm. Pro from Kuyu. And I just love how lightweight it is. And it can go from, you know, the 7200 size down to... As small as you need it to go. As small as a frame. As small as a frame. You can fold it up. 
So yeah. if you know how to fold it back in on itself and cinch it down, you just have the lid and you can even tuck the lid down. Mm -hmm. um, so that's sweet. And that'll choke down a moose quarter, the 72, seven, uh, 78s, no, no problem. Um, so it'll do everything for you. It'll choke it out. And if you really want, I've never had to enter load sling mode with the 72 or the 7800, but you can load that thing up beyond human uh, capacity for yeah, sure. Absolutely. And one thing about the QU, um, what I what comes with it, you get the the pack, and then you have to get the suspension kit, which is the uh, shoulder straps, and then the the belt that goes around your waist, and then inside is the the lightweight uh, carbon fiber frame. I have broke one. I broke one. I don't know what the hell happened. How it broke? I. Mm. Um, we sci washed one night. We planned on it. We brought one sleeping bag between my father in law, my wife, and me. We put her in the middle, and we were just fighting over half a sleeping bag the whole night <laughs> underneath the tarp, you know? <clears throat> Rock what you got. And uh, I woke up in the middle of the night, and I had my pack, and my pack was down at her feet. And I heard Vince get up, and he came and he threw the pack down behind us, but I had my DSLR camera in the back. Mm. And I think it swung in the lid and just hit perfect fulcrum point and pop, broke one of those arms off and i didn't even notice it until we were packing out the caribou the next day i'm like what the hell is going on this just doesn't feel right and i look like oh yeah that one of the ears you know mm. on the top oh on the top is what broke huh? yep and it broke I'm like whoa that was weird well, what about the camera that was fine hmm. i've replaced that thing and yeah i've spent more money on replacements for that i'm, I'm pretty tough on gear mm -hmm. but in a china shop yeah which i guess we'll have to do another podcast and kind of talk about filming equipment and what's necessary for that because we don't really have that in our apocalypse bags here. Yeah, it just kind of depends on on what would happen. But I'd, I'd honestly throw if if it was apocalypse time, I'd do the seventy eight hundred, and then quite honestly, I'd I'd throw everything else in that Barney's pack. I'd throw the Barney's pack on my back so I could throw a kid in there, another human if I needed to, <laughs> a little Indian woman, a little Indian woman, throw her right in there, bless her heart. Um, and uh, it just depends on the hunt, and everything will change, and the tools, the knives, even for a moose, and bring a little handsaw, mm -hmm. bring a tr uh, tree climbing spikes with me to, to access for moose. Definitely not bring it on a sheep hunt, but mm -hmm. I I really carry just about everything for the sheep as I do for the moose. The only thing I do is just kind of modify it a little bit, like Ooh. chest waders for the moose, mm -hmm. tree climbing spikes, but I still have the same stuff. Mm -hmm. Same exact. Yeah, same kill kit and same idea behind everything. Uh, with what, the moose, I get, I'll, br I'll bring some bigger knives. Mm -hmm. That'll be part of it. And a tarp. Yeah, which is kind of what I got for that uh, in that kit. Those those Hevlon knives go through, you go through lots of blades when you're cutting that thick moose hide. Yeah, yeah, you can sharpen them up if you got a sharpener. Mm -hmm. But my moose hunting is a little bit tougher than most. A lot of people are like, oh, let's be quiet, slip around. I just, I'm, I swamp lord, dude. I climb trees. I break stuff. I push stuff out of the way. And like, mm -hmm. sometimes I, I quiet it up a little bit, depending if like, depending on what I'm wearing, if I'm wearing rain jacket, I'm like, ah, let me be a little bit quieter. Cause it's just loud. But then I've got Gore-Tex chest waders on, just like screw it. Let's march in breaking stuff. And they're going to say, what the hell is going on? And we better stick around and just look. Mm -hmm. So it, I don't know. It all depends on the hunt. It depends on like, you know, glamping. It's a misnomer. Even if you go out, sometimes you bring too much and then you're like, well, where the hell? Like I looked at your pack, the 7200, you got your, your bug out because you're obviously not planning on packing a sheep out, mm -hmm. but where are you going to put all the extra stuff? Mm-hmm. When you got a, oh, when you got a like, sheep in there. When you got a sheep, that's when you start attaching it to the outside. <laughs> yeah, if you watch my solo goat hunt, some somebody tried to call me out. Oh, there's no, there's not enough to have a goat in that pack. I'm like, dude, look at look at the crap hanging on the outside of my uh -huh. pack. You know, I didn't go in with a sleeping bag. I put the full bat. Like all I came in with was literally a sleeping bag and the clothes that I was wearing mm -hmm. and my film equipment. So the sleeping bag was on the outside. Full goat, full goat hide was in the pack mm -hmm. meat down low cape up high and on that situation i fleshed that goat on the spot and took extra time to to 
trim up the meat, make sure everything was essential that I was bringing out. Mm -hmm. So about how how what is the body size once you get that skin off? I don't know, dude. I know deer or or bigger. (laughs) No, way bigger than black tail deer. Goats Mm -hmm. are, my opinion, are bigger than sheep, especially mature belly. Depends on like if you shoot a three year old versus you know a six year old and above or a five year old. I don't know. It's depending where you shoot your your goat and Mm -hmm. what they've had to eat and where they're at. Everything is all depending, but yeah, goats are bigger and um, they they weigh more. Okay. For sure. 100%. It's it's, it's hard to tell with animals that that have like that much hide or hair. You're like, how big is the body underneath? Them? They're really big. Mm-hmm. They're big. But you see some people like, oh yeah, I packed it out. Like right on, you know, it's a two year old, three year old snow cone Billy. Badass. Like, yes, yeah, right on. Glad mm-hmm. you got one. But it's just like shooting a white tail, small white tail. You know, you shoot a 150 to 170 pound, you know, first rack white tail. Mm-hmm. versus, you know, a five-year-old mature whitetail, it's going to be substantially different. Mm-hmm. You know, you're talking 100 pounds possibly. Yeah. Depending. Mm-hmm. And depending on the stage of rut that they're in, you know what I'm saying? Everything is all depending. Sliding scale for every animal. Um, and you might just have a badass little Billy that's got great genetics and he's beefy, you mm-hmm. know? Same thing with rams. Um and then that being said, you shoot it, you know, sometimes you'll shoot an old man ram and that old man ram is, he's lost all of his fat and his hips are sunken in and he's lighter than a, a seven-year-old. Mm-hmm. So it's all kind of depending. Same with moose. This is, I, I imagine this goes across the board for just about all animals in, in all situations. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Leo's, Leo's moose was substantially smaller than than mine that I shot the year before and I'm mm-hmm. glad because it was just me and Leo mm. <laughs> and some of like some moose hindquarters take two people for you to lift them up to get them in the side by side or wherever you're, you're hauling them off to you know mm-hmm. so I'm actually glad that you shot a little bit younger one that's that's how and they, always, <laughs> they taste different sometimes mm-hmm. I wouldn't I wouldn't say that one did but if you shot an old, like mm. your, your old broken horn solo guy. Yeah, that was tough. Mm-hmm. That was tough. And then I shot one with Eric, Eric Hershey. He shot one on the Yukon where I did the same thing with every every moose that I've done. I do the same exact thing. Every animal, it's all, you know, keep the blade, blades clean away from um, the urine sac, you know, their, their, their bladder mm-hmm. away from their hawks. Like there's certain things you do and I, I'll usually bring a couple of knives, but there was one moose that I was like, Whoa, this thing is ready. Out of all the moose I've ever killed, there's one moose that I remember. I'm like, yep. Now I know when people are like, yeah, you shot a ruddy old moose. I'm like, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know the stroke of luck or the, like the, ratio of how many you got to kill or whatever but i just know i remember that moose at yukonk was wow that is something else Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he was rutted up and he died in stress so that that's probably i mean crazy right like fighting mad came charging out so imagine the testosterone all that had something to do with it Mm -hmm. Um, but i do know one thing for any hunt i have left a lot of things behind that I wish that I had and I've brought too many things on different hunts. This is kind of my 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 finisher. My finish him. Old Mortal Kombat. <laughs> finish him. Finish him. Yeah, yeah. Move. Up, up, down, B, A, B, A, A, <laughs> down, <Excellent>. circle. circle. <laughs> <laughs> this is the end. Uh, mental, mental toughness rules all, but I do know mentally toughness will not cut an animal hide. You need to have a knife and a sharp knife. And you can't just have a sharp knife when you go out. You have to have a knife and a knife sharpener. Mm -hmm. And you can get away with a lot Mm -hmm. to be able to go out, do something dumb, shoot something further than you should have. Legally all, of course, but Mm -hmm. you have to have a sharp knife. And and you, if you have a knife sharpener, you need to know how to use it. If you've never used a flattened stone before, then it's probably not a good idea to bring it out there. You better it's figure gonna, it out. Because you're not going to get an edge on it if you don't. You better figure it out. So I know you need to have a sharp knife. Bottom line, I would say you need to have a pack. Otherwise, your meat's just going to get just throttled if you're anywhere far away from wherever you're supposed to be. You need to have a pack. 
not necessarily a game bag because you can clean the meat back up, but game bags, everything is a, a you need that you should have a game bag, right? Mm-hmm. Like you should have a bare essentials kit that has game bags for your animal, mm-hmm. survival equipment, a little bit of a first aid, a knife, a knife sharpener or replacement blades. And you better have replacement blades because if that breaks or something happens and you're done, you're done, man. It's, mm-hmm. it's really tough. I, I, I know that much. Um, mm-hmm. So all of those things enough to stay the night. You need to be, you need to be prepared enough. Even if you leave all of your stuff, and that's the whole thing with moose hunting, you need to be prepared enough to kill a moose and stay the night out. Even if you're not prepared in siwash, mm-hmm. that's how you kill moose. That's how you kill some critters that you would have turned a non-successful trip into a successful trip. Sharp knife, survival gear, the bare minimum survival gear, and. Um, You'll be able to make it out, but mentally toughness, that's like the one tool that everybody overlooks. And I'm numb to it now where I'm like, I'm having the time of my life, you know, drinking a six pack and everybody else is freezing. I'm like, man, this is great. Like, mm-hmm. oh my God. They're like, dude, how, who are you? What we waited the hell? all year for this. Yeah. <laughs> like, dude, oh my God, dude. Look at this. It's a beautiful bird, blue bird. We're up, you know, 4,000 feet and there's some billies. Let's go get them. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. mental toughness. Will will help you a lot, but mental toughness will not sharpen a knife. So have a good knife, good knife sharpener. The last thing I would say is whatever you do, whatever you do, whatever weapon you're hunting with, archery may be a little bit different. You have a quiver. You only have so much. You need to have enough ammunition. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. My thing is I grab a couple shells and I throw them in each pocket so they don't jiggle. Mm-hmm. But you need to have enough ammunition to knock your critter down. And then if you're in Alaska, you better have one to save your life, buddy, at least one. Mm-hmm. So don't 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 shoot your wad, Perfect. So to speak. I lo- those are excellent lessons that people like myself have learned the hard way. <laughs> Sharp knife, mm-hmm. big lighter, extra ammo, and be a tough son of a bitch. Mm-hmm. That's the recipe for success. Mm-hmm. I love it. Mm-hmm. I think for for me, um, man, you hit the nail on the head. The only thing that I would add that I guess we didn't get too far into is having optics, good optics when you're out there, especially the hunting that you do. I'm surprised you didn't mention that of spot spot animals. Oh yeah. He, he sits silently. There's not much that makes it past these little beady eyes. Mm-hmm. There's not much. If you've gone hunting with me and you're listening to this, you know. Mm-hmm. There's not many critters that make it past these eyes. And I'm sure there is. But I'm very confident. Like I have wolf eyes. Yeah. I have eagle eyes. Mm-hmm. I have special eyes mm-hmm. that find critters. Mm-hmm. No doubt. So that's why I don't ever go and I'm like, hey, whoever spots it first, I know it's not going to be a fun hunt for anybody. <laughs> I will find it first, and it's not fun. Yeah. That's why I hunt a little bit differently and make it special for anybody. I don't want it to be a competition type of thing. Because mm-hmm. it's already done, buddy. Before we leave the truck, man, I already know where it's at. Oh, man. You ta- you're talking <laughs> tough. Dude, you're, I talk tough. I find animals. Tough. I find animals. That, like, yeah. Mm-hmm. If we go, I would be very surprised if somebody spots mm-hmm. something before I do. Mm-hmm. 100%. And I think other lessons that we've kind of went over for my concluder, you got to bring your stuff with you when you when you go out. You yep. could have the most prepared pack, but if you leave it in the truck, it does nobody good. I will so. say this about optics. You bring it up. I mm-hmm. still have nightmares about caribou on the Brooks Range north. Mm-hmm. Optics, range finding optics, range finding optics has changed the way that I hunt 100%. And it's basically a cheat code. Mm -hmm. Having range-finding binoculars, 100%, hands down. So if you don't have one of them, you don't need one. But basically, to to kill an animal, you got to be able to see the whites of their eyes, and you need to be in a position where you know you can't miss. It does not matter your range. You need to be 200 yards, Mm -hmm. max. Mm-hmm. And you know when you're that close because the animal's going to be filled up in your scope in a three by nine. You're going to say, "Oh yeah, okay, I'm going to do that." 
because I have missed animals before when I was much younger and I have nightmares about the Brooks range mm -hmm. and, um, hiking outside the five miles on the Dalton highway corridor and having enough money to get there, sleeping under tarps, being mentally tough and not having the equipment to know how far, far they were and having enough ammunition. But where, why the hell is that bullet not hitting that caribou and you see it hitting at its feet and you're like, this is dumb. Mm -hmm. So I don't even want to talk about optics. Get close. Just just, just get close. <laughs> even if you're going to be tough and dumb and go hard, get really close. Mm -hmm. And so if you're listening to this, I know there's going to be like some, uh, some saged veterans that are listening to this. There's going to be corrections. Everybody's got a different formula, right? Um, there's going to be some people of, of all sorts of experience and backgrounds. Um, so... If you have any corrections or if you got any tips that you want to share along the way, uh, you know, maybe, uh, you know, something on fire starting, maybe something on uh, range finding mm -hmm. tips without a range finder, how to, how to uh, judge your animal in the distance. Like if you, if you got something cool, reach out to us. I would love it. I mean, we, we're, we're talking send, tough send about a, people. Send us your number one gear recommendation. What, what do you keep in your pack that you cannot leave behind? Send us, send us what it is. hundred percent. And I do have one shout out. I got one shout out to my man mm -hmm. who well, reached out in the time of the COVID and he said like, Hey, are you guys uh, jumping on his, uh, is his IG handle is Magitich. M A J E T I C H. I'm not sure if I said that right. He sounds kind of Ukrainian, like Manelik. Maybe. But that 23 and me told me I was actually Irish, hmm. Scottish. Did you did you still have that Russian blood also? But uh, you know it's it's Manelik. So mm -hmm. uh, Magitich, hey man, I really appreciate you reaching out and telling us what you want to hear. This this podcast. Uh, was basically from some of his feedback, which was really cool. He's uh, he's locked up down there in Florida, coming back to AK. He's moving around, uh, trying to get some more content that's going to get him through the COVID. So here's a little podcast. We're kind of we're erring on the side of caution, but we're still a little bit of a uh, bad boys because Landon. I mean, this wasn't necessarily essential, but I feel like this could be essential. Mm -hmm. um, we're we're getting we're getting you folks through. Yeah, what? right. So don't tell on us, otherwise Landon's going to have to eat a $1,000 uh, fine, which... <laughs> Landon? <laughs> <laughs> I got about 500 bucks, man, maybe. Uh, I got a credit card. I'll buy you some Kuyu. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, if you do have corrections, make sure you reach out to us, Mission Alaska, on Instagram, Facebook, and website. Check out their blogs and stories. And vice versa for Prey on Adventure. Mm -hmm. If you want to party, hit up Prey on Adventure. Mm -hmm. Check out our YouTube videos, a lot of the how-tos and whatnot. I mean, there's a couple average bros trying to be above average. So mm -hmm. if you see something that you could pro staff and you got a little hot tip, send it our way. We'll give you a shout out. Mm -hmm. And if you got anything else you want to add to the last cast, hit us up on the last cast at gmail.com. And yeah. if you want to party, once these uh, restaurants right. open, we drink beer. Mm -hmm. We'll drink free beer for sure. <laughs> we like free <laughs> beer. <laughs> yeah. No, but I hope everybody's fine and making their way through this whole time, hard times that we have. Look forward to hunting season. Hopefully, it doesn't get too much in the way of that because um, that could be pretty devastating, like we talked about at the beginning. But if they do continue to have the travel ban through the summer maybe those rivers will be a little bit less crowded if you think about it as a positive so there's that well get out there and grind peeps it's uh it's springtime essentially bears are going to be popping out and uh, good luck to everybody who's going out there stay safe and uh, we'll catch you on the flip till next time thanks for listening <laughs>